I, I thought I'd hit record, but I didn't. But um, anyways, uh, we got this Dormeyer Silver Chef uh, 4300 in here that was uh, sent in. This is sent in by Fred, and it has a few issues. Uh, mainly, you plug it in and turn on, and it doesn't turn on. Um, the uh, um, the front piece here is held on with wire, so that's no good. And the uh, speed control knob, the set screw was missing from that. So basically, all I did so far is uh, I cut the top cover off and I took these two halves apart. Um, we, we did it plugged in, there was no power to it, so we just started pulling it apart to find out why. And um, when I get to this point, I can see there is way too much cord inside of here. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to disconnect the cord from here. And I'm going to show you guys why this thing doesn't run. Okay, so there's one. Dang. Well, there's all kinds of wire here. The ring is just like all twisted around itself. Alright. There we go. Let me pull this out of here. If it'll clear. No, I want to cut that because I'm, gonna, I'm getting rid of this. I think it might be connected somewhere else though. Alright, deal with that in a bit. Um, Alright, let's get this cord out of here. Let me, uh, let me get up the cord restraint off. This is what happens when you put too much cord in Dormeyer. Now I'm not sure I think they got really lucky. It doesn't look like uh, doesn't look like it got the wire, but let's see if we even have a good cord here for starters. I think that's a good place to start. And I'm going to set this up so we'll hear a beep if we got a good connection, or if, if we got a if we got a, a good yeah a good circuit here. If it's open, then we won't get no beep. Okay, so white side is good. Let's try the black. Okay. So it didn't cut through the cord all the way, but it may have enough to short it something out. So I'm going to be digging deeper into this to find out what's the deal. And I'm just going to go ahead and pitch this cord here. Alright. This looks good. We're just going to loop this up there. Keep my parts out of the way. Check our brushes. Uh huh. Well, that might be an issue right there. Huh. Look at that. Ain't no brush left on it. Okay. Well, that would make it not run. That one's got a little bit left on it. But there's I didn't even have any tension for the spring, so I don't think it was gonna run anywhere. And everything in here so far even the resistor looks good. Um a little more once we get it apart, but just at first glance, it looks like just brushes. I say you never know. 
no problem what you're going to find in here. Let's go ahead and get these screws out, pull the pins out of here. And then we get our gearbox off. Because we're going to be changing the grease in this. out here. These are the ones that lock the beaters in. So kind of a nifty design. Simple. See, it's got that golden colored grease Dormeyer uses. You see how good it still is. Held up well over the years. Uh, that was bad. It's like tree sap. Jurassic Park stuff here. Too. Um, surprisingly, though, earning turns. Yeah, you know, I say surprising because well, as gooey as that is, I'm surprised that these are like locked into place here. Um, I'm gonna try and get these shafts out of here. I see you want to put up a fight. There's that one. Not much grease came out on it, so that's good. It'll make it easy to clean. But this one, there we go. And there's plastic washers on these, and I think they both stayed down inside of there, so I'm going to dig those out. Alright. Let's get some more of this funky grease out of here. This stuff is, is like tree sap. I mean, it's sticky. If you've got this in your hair, you'd be really complaining. Look at that. Never seen, uh, I've never seen grease get like this before. That's a first. Alright. I, um, there's a, a ball bearing on the other end of that armature, so I take this apart. I want to make sure I don't lose that. And there's a little, like a little piece that fits in there. It's almost like a little cup that fits in there. Sometimes they come out. You know, they fall right out. Sometimes you can't get them out for nothing, so. I, mean, I guess if I had loosened this jam knot and tightened this up, it would force it out, but normally if they don't come out, I, I just leave them. Alright, once again, break out the needle nose because I don't got my wrench. A little quarter inch wrench. Yeah, I think I think we'll get this running again. I have high hopes for it. dirty side for sure. But you know, believe it or not, it rotates alright. I mean it does feel like you can tell there's no lubricant back here, but 
Oh, that yeah, does seem to go okay. Alright. So. I think I'm going to nip these off because I'm going to get rid of this. Um, you know, after that, you know, one sunbeam that came in that was shocking the owner. And uh, then hearing, you know, from the malt mixer man about how he pulls these out of all his malt machines because they shock people. Um, I don't like leaving these in here at all now. So anytime I see an RF filter, I get rid of it. They just really make me nervous. Alright, I gotta take this off. And I do have a socket. Right. Just don't think it's this one. So yeah, I don't want to send something back and then have one of those things, you know, start zapping people. That would be bad. Bad news for them for sure. Bad news for me too because they wouldn't be very happy with me. Alright. That's oh, that doesn't look too bad. It looks some Somebody has been in here before. It looks like somebody sanded this roughly. So I think somebody was in, inside of this before. Alright, armature out. Surprisingly, I mean, it doesn't need to be turned down, just polished up. After seeing those brushes, that's, that's really a surprise. Um, Alright, all that's left here is just wiring. Yep, that's it. So in, a, in here, half of this has a um, oil wick in here, but this is all riveted together and stuff, so you never get it apart. But there's enough gap there where you can just keep soaking it until it stops soaking in the oil. Um, I'll have to check on another set of these and see what length of these are supposed to be, because I don't believe these are very long brushes to begin with. But, like I said, looking at the resistor, it looks good. It don't have no burn marks on it, no cracks on it. So, I think I'm going to go, I'm going to get everything cleaned up that needs to be cleaned up and, and degrease, get the rest of the grease out of here. And uh, then I think we're going to start putting it back together to the point where we can hook some power up to it and test it and see what we got. Um, so as soon as I get to that point, I'll come back.
this one here was a success, sort of. Um, I did pull this off of another one, but unfortunately the little tabs snapped on there too. They're just extremely brittle. But this one isn't bent. Um, it sits flat against here and that screw holds it on. So it looks better now. Uh, you can tell the ejector is working. Um, I did find a set screw for that here. So let's go ahead and uh, plug this puppy in. And see if she runs. One thing about these door myers I hate is this gets up in here, you know, you kind of got to poke it, poke it back through with your pinky on the other side. But other than that, this thing just needs to be wiped down and it's good to go. And um, we'll move on to the next one. So if you guys have any questions or comments, leave them down below. I'll get back to them as soon as I can. Um, if you like it, give it a thumbs up. And if you want to be notified when we post more videos, because, you know, we do got some different things coming up. Um, Go ahead and uh, subscribe and click that bell so you get notified when we post them and, and that way you can check them out without having to search for them. Um, but anyways, uh, we're going to wrap this one up and move on to the next one. So as always, thanks for watching and we will see you on the next one.